Joshua chapter 2. This is an interesting chapter because Joshua sends some spies into the land, the land of promise, actually the city of Jericho, to check it out. He wants to find out what the climate is, what the people are thinking. They know they're out there, but they're wondering what those in Jericho are thinking. So these two spies go in. We don't know who they are. There's a lot of conjecture about who they are, but they go in and they do something that's kind of different. They go to Rahab's house. They go to a house of a harlot. Now, they're not going there for immoral reasons. Nothing's insinuated that it was. But they go there, I think, because, well, a lot of men are going in and out of the house and they won't be detected. And while they're there, they talk to Rahab. And she knows that, well, the people in Jericho know they're in the city somewhere. And she hides them. And she does something that, well, she's a pagan, she's a heathen, she, she's a harlot. And she does something, however, that shows that she knows who their God is. In fact, listen to these verses from Joshua chapter 2. It says, this is Rahab talking. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were on the other side of the Jordan. Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. See, the rumors have spread about the power of Israel's God. And she goes on and says, And as soon as we heard these things, while well, our hearts melted, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, He is the God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. So here's what's going on. The people in Jericho are scared to death of the Israelites. And now they found this out through this harlot, Rahab. And she's going to be the one that helps them come into the city. And because she does, and because she fears God, even though she's immoral, even though she's a harlot, God honors her. And here's kind of the principle of the story. God uses unlikely people. He rescues people from all kinds of situations in life. God's going to use a harlot, a pagan, someone who doesn't even know the real true God, to bring his people into the city, and then he brings her into a relationship with himself. In fact, she even ends up being in the heritage of David, the greatest king of Israel. So the most unlikely person probably in the whole city of Jericho becomes the hero of the story. And I would say this, God uses and saves unlikely people. He has a hand that's not too short and a heart that's never hard. And he reaches the unreachable over and over again. That's why he reached you and that's why he reached me. Because God reaches the unlikely.